So I'm back home from Vegas, but uh, this session was my last 510 session at the Bellagio. Enjoy and hit that intro. I know what you're thinking, thinking, thinking. I've seen this intro before, but it took me kind of a long time to make. So you're gonna see it again. It's my last day in Vegas. I'm down money in tournaments, but up money in cash games. So the trip is currently a net positive. Time for one last 510 session. I buy in for $1,000 and the first significant hand I play is ace queen off on the small blind. The hijack opens to $30. I have a pretty clear three bet here and I make it $120. Only the hijack calls and the flop comes king nine three with two clubs. This board doesn't hit my hand that well, but it should favor my range as the three better, often having hands like aces, kings, ace king, and king queen. So I make a C bet of $90. He folds and I take it down. Next, I have ace king in the small blind, the hijack limps. I raise it up to $40 and the hijack calls. Heads up to a flop of 783 with two diamonds. This flop is pretty bad for both my range and my hand, so I check, and the hijack checks back. The turn is the king of diamonds, bringing in the flush. The pot is small, and there's already a possible flush, so I decide to take a passive line and check. He bets $60. I think raising would be an overplay, so I just call, and the river comes a 7, pairing the board. I really don't know how much value I can get from worse hands, so I'm just going to treat my hand like a bluff catcher and I check. Maybe he'll bet with a missed straight draw or flush draw, but he checks back, he has king queen, and we take it down. After that, I pick up pocket kings in the low jack and I open to $30. It's a dream scenario. The small blind three bets me to $150. I'm sitting with the second best hand in poker. I'm just thinking the best way I can get all of this chump's money. I four bet to $400. Well, I guess he was thinking the same thing, except in his mind, I'm the chump. And he puts in the elusive five bet all in for $1,280 effective. Five bet shoves are almost never bluffs. I'm just hoping he is queens or ace king suited. But a big part of me feels like he's going to flip over aces. Still, there is no way I'm folding here. This might be one of those times, I guess. What's it like? Uh, I'll leave it up to you. Okay. okay. He flips over kings, we have the same hand, and we decide to just chop the pot and not see a run out, not give each other a bad beat with like a four diamond board or something. Hit that like button because we're about to get into some big pots here. I pick up five seven of spades in the hijack. The cutoff had to post $10 for his bathroom break, so I opened a bit bigger to $40. Five seven suited in the hijack is definitely on the looser side, but what's the worst that can happen? Anyway, only the cutoff calls were heads up to a flop of king deuce three with two spades, and I put in a C bet of $40. The cutoff makes the call, and the turn is a nine. My holding has no showdown value here with seven high, and my range should have a lot more strong kings than my opponent. I continue the pressure, and I bet $120. If I get raised, I can let it go. But the cutoff makes the call, and the river comes the six of spades. Cha-ching! We hit our flush. Time to go for value now. I bet $300, and this sends my opponent into the tank. He looks visibly uncomfortable. His palms are sweaty, knees weak, arms are heavy. I'm begging for his call already. But then he goes all in. And now all that discomfort that I've been seeing seems like a giant act. Just the Hollywood, huh? Just pull the Hollywood on me. This man's trying to win an Oscar. I, I should fold facing a raise on the river. It's just it's just such an underbluffed spot. I know he has it in my bones, but I can't seem to hit the fold button. I make the call, and he of course shows ace queen of spades for a higher flush. Five, seven of spades, huh? What's the worst that could happen? (laughs) 
Okay, so after that horrible mistake, I reload $1,000 and pick up Ace King on the big blind. The cutoff opens to $30, the button calls, the small blind calls. I put in a three bet to $180. Hopefully they think I'm on tilt and call me off of the worst hand, but everyone folds and I take it down. In this next one, the dealer accidentally flips over my second card. It was a seven, so I get a new card, and it must be fate because I get none other than the lucky snowman in the hijack. I open to $30, the small blind calls, and the big blind calls. The flop comes out 10, 10, 8, cha-ching! We flop a boat, time to win all my money back. They both check to me. I have this board pretty locked up, so I decided to slow play and check back. Hopefully they can catch up with a straight or a flush or something. The turn is an ace and both opponents check to me again. I can't let this check through anymore. I bet $60. The small blind folds, but the big blind raises to $210. Okay, let's go. My hand is disguised. I make the call and the river is a five. Now the big blind bets $500 and I'm thinking what to do. He could possibly have a higher full house here, but there's no way I'm folding. It's just whether I want to call or go all in. I only have 790 left in my stack. For only $290 more, he's really not going to be able to fold trips. So I decide to go for it. If I'm beat, I'm beat. I go all in and he snap calls. Well, he flips over ace 10 for a higher boat. And, well, it looks like it was my fate, which was to die. <laughs> Honestly, that was a really rough last session. To end the trip, bringing me in the negative for the trip, which really sucks. Um, getting flushed over flushed, and I knew it. I knew he had a better flush, and I couldn't fold. And then boat over boat also sucks, but... I don't know what you can do on that one. Flopped a boat, then he turned a better boat, so. All right, I'll see you guys. Thanks for staying tuned, and I'm heading home.